Well, this is giving me an excuse to make another really bad video, isn't it? Hello, today, instead of recording audio on a very old and outdated format, we'll be using one of these. This is what is known as a mini disc. It's a format Sony created to allow CD quality audio in a smaller, more portable format. You can see it. It's no, it's no bigger than my hand. It's really small. If you actually compare this to a CD, this is quite tiny. And <coughs> unlike a CD, this is real durable. I can tell you that because I threw one of these at a wall, cracked the case, stuck it in the machine, and it still plays just fine. This isn't got the disc. It's I don't know where it's gone. But you can't take the disc out, the laser accesses the disc through a metal flap, the ring inserted in the machine slides down and allows the record head to, uh, to technically alter the particles on the disc and turns it into ones and zeros. So let's actually grab a new disc and get started on recording one of these little things, whatever you call them. This right here is my machine of choice. This is the Sony MDS S37 released about 1996. This is kind of unreliable because sometimes it records, sometimes it doesn't. And it's got a bit of a faulty mechanism, the eject mechanism is kind of bust, so expect some weird grinding noises coming from this thing. Let's actually have a quick walkthrough here for all the transport controls. You have your eject, fast forward, rewind, play, pause, stop, record. You have the AMS dial as well, which is essentially the next and previous track. Alongside, you have everything to do with the recording side of the machine. You have your stereo mono switch, your input for both digital and analog. And for analog, you have your record level. You know, I me, mean, I record a lot of records on two mini discs, so it kind of helps out to have that there. You have all the you have your play mode, so that's essentially shuffle and uh, shuffle and uh, program. You have your repeat, scroll button for uh, titles that can't fit onto the screen, you have your display. <coughs> and of course you have your headphone level as well. And now it's time for the fun part, actually turning the actual machine on, so here we go. Here's here, I've left it on shuffle, so let's turn that off. There we are. And now, time for the fun part, opening the disc up. Before we open the disc up, let's just have a quick look around before all this wrapping gets destroyed. As most uh, perfectionists would say, because there are some people in the world that much rather have these sealed and not use them. I much rather use them, because that's essentially the purpose I bought them for. So, that there's the front. You can see that we are using a uh, 74 minute premium disc today. A really nice design, this. You go look on the back. You can see the <coughs> the uh, shock absorbing mechanism, sorry I've got a bit of a uh, sore throat today, the uh, asthma's taking its toll on me. You see the infamous shock absorbing mechanism, it don't really do anything, like I, I explained it in the previous video, it's just a coating, doesn't do anything, so you can see like a, uh, I can't focus a bloody thing, but there's like a little graph there that tells you apparently what it does, it does nothing. Uh, where does it say it? Here we go, uh, it says just here, if you can't see it, it just says printed in Japan. Nice to know where it comes from, it's not, not like most of the uh, really bad stuff now, it says made in China, I've had enough of that, happened to made in England. Right, time for the uh, worst part, get the knife, and open the disc up. Ah, oh, I'm an evil person. You see, inside the disc we get the paper labels. I don't really like these. I just much rather use the small little ones. Put them at the side of the disc and just put them on there. And here's the actual disc. Let's take it out of the plastic case. You look at that. It's got the infamous shock absorbing mechanism or the coating. I am aware they, they do they do call these coatings in other countries. There we are. Nice design that. Quick look at the back. 
Yeah, that usually it will say made in Japan, but in this case it doesn't. You've got your gold shutter. It's not gold, it's just coloured metal. So let's go put this in the machine and uh, have a go at trying to record one of these. I don't know how many times this thing's actually gotten to actually get going, but I'm going to have to do the whole sequence again. So, disc, into the machine, table of contents really, it's going to take for bloody ages. I've already put the input into analogue, so we don't have to worry about that. And like I said, it's going to be recording over Bluetooth from my computer, yada yada yada. And all I'm going to be doing is just showing what it does, so blank disc. That's what it was meant to say just then. If it says blank disc, there's nothing on the disc, so... Or either you've had your table of contents screwed up. In that case, I could do nothing but throw the disc at the wall and re-record it. So, let's press record, and there we go. Zooming on the display. It says one U. And now let's start our audio. And what we do is we go on to, I'm just going to turn it to the side a bit, we go to our record level and slowly turn it up until we're just at, just at the area between the 4 and the 0. Once you're there, in my opinion, that's the best place to get a nice clear signal, but if you go too high, you see you go over and it will clearly indicate that you've gone over by flashing the red lights at your hands and in some cases it does beep I have had it beep at me before and that's not my sound so let's just get the level set correctly there we are that's the level you want and now we can actually have a quick jump cut so now I've got all the audio queued up and ready to go all I've got to do now is press play pause on the machine and start the actual audio on the computer. Let's see if I can actually find it. There it is. Now you see there, it picked up the uh, blank track, it's actually done another track. If you're recording a CD, that actually kind of makes quite a lot of sense because then you can actually leave this thing unattended, do the whole CD and come back, it's done the CD all for you. And it's brought all the track numbers down automatically, so then that's more convenient. And now comes the fun part, we can actually, let's take the glove off. I'm actually going to move it over to the camera to the side a bit. For the, for my favourite part of actually using the mini disc. So you don't have to write all the track info out. So in that case it means that you can put the track titles actually on the screen. So we're going to do that now. So what we've got to do is go to the no edit button. And scroll to it says name in, which it does now. So you press yes. And as you can see. We've got a cursor, like you would get on the computer. And now we've actually can scroll through using the AMS style and actually put the title in. And when you find the character you want, press in the AMS style. This is not making much sense, is it? I mean, the bloody camera sucks as well. Look. And then press the AMS style to actually get the letter you want. Scroll. And click. It's that easy. And that's what I do just to make it a bit quicker. And when you're happy with the tot you want, just press the yes button. And there you are. You've officially put a track title onto the disc. And now when you're done with your recording, simply press stop. And now Go down to your amplifier, select the input that you've got your mini disc recorder plugged into. Find the track that you've recorded and right there you're actually putting the name up, so we press display. Press stop again, no name. That's really there we go, and press play. And that's all good. But you may have noticed right there, there's this little red light that says TOC. That means it still needs to write the table of contents. To do that, all you do is you just press the eject button. Give the machine a couple of minutes to write the table of contents and then... Once you're done recording your disc, stick a few labels on it. I don't care. 
get your case, slide it in the case, just like that, keep the disc nice and protected, and if you're like me, stick it in a box and forget about it. That right there is how you record mini discs, and soon one day, you will have a big collection, not like me. I need to buy a load more. So you can't take the disc out. Shit. Well, that won't meant to happen. Which is it? Why is it not picking it up? 